A Plague Tale Requiem is the ambitious sequel to 2019's excellent but often ignored Plague Tale Innocence. Given its predecessor delivered some incredible cinematic storytelling and rat-based terror, we've been itching to get our hands on it. Continuing the uh, tale of Amicia's quest to find a cure for her brother Hugo's prime macular infection, it should come as no surprise that trouble follows in their wake, and you're going to encounter a heck of a lot more ravenous rat hordes, murderous humans, and secret societies. It's good, even great, depending on your tastes, but an ever-present sense of familiarity and some lingering bugs can bring down the experience. By video game standards, three years feels like a quick turnaround time for a cinematic story-driven sequel, and A Plague Tale Requiem follows in the footsteps of its predecessors in a lot of ways, perhaps too many. In fact, if you've played, or replayed, A Plague Tale Innocence after the next-gen update was released last year, you might find the sequel a little too familiar, most notably during the opening act. It's one of the game's few flaws, as, like most cinematic action adventures, it relies heavily on tightly scripted encounters bookended by lengthy cutscenes. It also doesn't help that A Plague Tale Requiem's story follows a similar arc to the first game, including the three-act structure, with the hunt for the cure for Hugo still taking centre stage before the final act takes you on a wildly different and dark trajectory. Thankfully, Requiem picks up near the end of the first act, and spends a lot more time delving into the history of the Prime Macula, the Order, and even the nature of Hugo and Amicia's bond, a bond that continues to grow over the sequel, even if some traumatic bonding experiences are a retread of the first game. After the all-too-familiar opening act that has you escaping bandits, murderous town guards and rat hordes, the second act is one of adventure and discovery, albeit not without a veneer of grimness and danger, before the final act ups the stakes to a suitably insane level that outdoes the final chapters of the first game. Now, it's going to be a matter of preference, but Requiem has pacing that ebbs and flows, rather than just escalates constantly. It's happy to swing from brutal violence and body horror to reflective strolls through the countryside for the sake of its narrative. Overall, I enjoyed the story beats in the dark finale more than its predecessor, and was intrigued by hints of where the IP might go next. That said, some of Amicia's allies feel like they belong in a more light-hearted adventure game, and many of the antagonists are once again sadistically evil, to the point half of France seems to be sociopathic. Honestly, a lot of the game's mechanics are mostly unchanged from the first game, and, as the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It also has a fairly predictable flow as you move from sections dedicated to storytelling, exploration and puzzling, to sections with stealth and or combat, reach an exit that triggers the next cutscene, and then repeat the cycle in the next chapter. Now that said, there has been innovation and refinement when it comes to stealth, combat, alchemy and crafting. Narrative permitting, it's still possible, and probably optimal, for Amicia to ghost away past most enemies, and that's now a smoother process with less frustrating, insta-fail stealth parts. If combat is your preference, she can also deal with threats in a level in more interesting and often sadistic ways. When stealthing about, you'll find more routes through each area now, and you even have a quick distract ability that gives you a few seconds of breathing room if you're about to be spotted. In combat, you have more options in close encounters. Her sling is now complemented by a crossbow, both of which can fling projectiles enhanced with a myriad of alchemical compounds to take out guards or to solve light and fire related puzzles. You spend most of the first act without Hugo, but when he finally joins Amicia, the rat hordes can be used to your advantage, even if they're still often your greatest threat. Your new companions also have a selection of skills that'll help you out when they're in your party, ranging from outright brawling with guards to providing a new type of distraction and a mobile light source. One significant improvement is how your gameplay style dynamically improves one of three skill trees that cover stealth, combat and alchemy, with new perks or abilities earned at specific thresholds. The game does try to present a moral dilemma as to whether you should be murdering tons of bandits, mercenaries and soldiers across southern France, and once again your companions will often comment on your approach. However, the story plays out the same regardless, and even forces you into direct combat or sequences of non-lethal stealth. On the whole, I'd say the gameplay is more varied than the first game, but as a cinematic game, it's still limited and restrictive. If you enjoyed the gameplay loop in A Plague Tale Innocence, you'll be more than satisfied with the sequel. However, if you found it too restrictive and directed, A Plague Tale Requiem is more of the same. The first game was already a looker, but the sequel significantly improves upon visuals and animation quality. The game is flat out gorgeous in places, making full use of the photogrammetically sourced textures, and there are plenty of moments you'll just want to relax and take in the stunning scenery. More detailed environments are combined with lighting effects that have been refined to give the game a more natural and realistic look. Similarly, character models are more detailed, animations more fluid, even if the lip syncing is sometimes off, and the rat swarms now move like a flood during several encounters. The soundtrack is once again incredible, with variations on familiar themes that can create an atmosphere ranging from tranquil peace to oppressive dread. Now, unfortunately, there were some technical issues that detracted from the experience when playing on the PS5 release build on a 4K HDR TV. We encountered a bug that generated extreme screen tearing, 
and it was only after switching to a different monitor at a lower resolution that the issue was resolved. This did not occur on any other PS5 game we've tested, and we've seen complaints in the forums, so hopefully a patch is on the way. And aside from the odd animation bug also seen on the PS5, think lining up Amicia for a takedown or pulling a switch, we didn't experience this problem on the Xbox Series consoles. So, overall, A Plague Tale Requiem is a solid sequel to the original game. Yes, it does more of the same, but it does it with significantly improved visuals and gameplay mechanics that have been refined and streamlined. The intensely cinematic story, coupled with a mix of stealth and combat, drive the plot forward at a variable but satisfying pace, and there were only rare moments of frustration thanks to the myriad of ways you could navigate rat hordes and deal with human enemies. It's strange then that in an industry so set by delays these last few years, our biggest issue with Requiem is that it could have benefited from a little more time passing since the last game to make the experience feel fresher. If you've made it this far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel as it helps us grow.